Um, okay, so basically, I'm going to get into the first part now. And I talked a little bit about it a minute ago. You have different types of voodoo, or voodoo is New Orleans voodoo. And all of these, basically, okay, let me run down the differences for you first. The difference between voodoo and hoodoo, in a nutshell, is according to the historians, voodoo is more like a religion and, and a religious practice and a religious belief system, as where hoodoo is more like folk magic and an actual um, magic practices, like the actual hands-on magic practicing. Now. I, I, I saw two different things about that, okay? I saw someone who is um, a pagan who said exactly what I just told you. Now, an ancestor of Marie Laveau said that hoodoo is also a form of religion too that it's very spiritual and you can really dive dive into it as a as a spiritual thing as well let me turn this off sorry about that guys i always forget to mute this and it beeps and all right okay so i you know i i think that it's more hoodoo is more what you want to take out of it i think um there are christians who practice hoodoo there are uh, pagans that practice hoodoo. There are people that practice voodoo that also practice hoodoo. Um, hoodoo is more the magic, the folk magic aspect of of um, the religion, so to speak. Voodoo is more a belief system. Voodoo, especially New Orleans voodoo, it came from Africa, and it came here straight from the transatlantic slave trade. Is how voodoo got here. And basically, a little small history lesson is when voodoo came here, the Africans that went to go practice it, they could not practice it in public when they came here because it was made illegal. Voodoo was made illegal, and they tried to convert all the Africans that came here over to like Christianity and other um, well-known, you know, more conventional, as I like to put, religions. And so... Um, they still continue to practice it, but in private. Um, they weren't allowed to practice it at all, really. And if they got caught, they could be put to death for uh, for practicing their beliefs, you know, which is messed up. But, you know, those were crazy times back then. Um, so what ended up happening with Louisiana voodoo, it's called New Orleans voodoo, and, and people – call it that and and think that it was only practiced and that only came from practicing in New Orleans but that's not true at all New Orleans voodoo is really Louisiana voodoo because it it was and still is practiced all over the state of Louisiana not just in New Orleans and so you have all these little different um, aspects that come from all over the state that make up the actual New Orleans voodoo religion and it's basically is a belief system where you you contact your uh, ancestor spirits. Um, you can make contact with the spirits of your family, uh, the spirits of the land, the spirits of place. Um, and there are different rituals and stuff like that that are designed to help open um, – open the, the doorway, so to speak, to those ancestor spirits um, and allow you to communicate with the ancestor spirits. Um, Legpa is the voodoo Jesus. He is the one that you would go to to, um, to ask for that doorway to be opened up. And uh, without getting into too much more detail, because I don't want to tell you something that's not right, um, that whole religion is based upon the spirits, very spiritual. Um, it's all based upon spirits. And hoodoo, for example, would be like, um, let's say, um, 
it's similar. Yeah, it is really similar to 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 paganism, but it's also very different <laughs> in certain aspects. And when I get when I get more, I hope I can get this person to come on and uh and and interview her for you guys because it just trust me, it would be a great interview. And I, I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best to try and, and and get her to come on. And and I don't see why she wouldn't. So hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll be able to to touch back on this again. Um, hoodoo is more, like I said, it's more the practice, like the folk magic. And all this comes from Africa. Um, hoodoo would be, let's say you take a, um, a little bottle and you were to put a, um, a spell on the bottle that would be a, a luck spell. And say you were to put it um, like under a table where people were gambling um, and you could and that little bottle would be designed to take their luck from them and put it in the bottle and then when they're finished you can go back and you take the bottle and the bottle supposedly have would have their luck in it you know that's like a spell like a folk magic like a spell you know that's the practice of hoodoo you know i mean that's just one little example that i came up you know just just to to kind of tell you all about it but um that's the basic difference between the two um, voodoo and hoodoo are very, very different. Um, voodoo is more of a religion. Hoodoo is more of a magic. So that's the basic difference between the two. Um, voodoo is probably one of the most misunderstood and, and, uh, and misguided religions that gets the worst rap ever. You know, when people talk about voodoo that don't know anything about it, you know, it's like the first thing they say, oh, they cut heads off of chickens and they just sacrifice this and sacrifice that and it's just so much more than that and hopefully i can get that guest to come on and, and tell y'all more about it um because it would be really cool so that's basically I, that's pretty much as far as i'm going to get into it <laughs> because like i said i don't want to tell y'all something that's not right and uh and there's such a i mean this i learned today by going through um these documentaries and listening to these practitioners speak today, I learned that that the voodoo religion is so much more complex than I even had any idea of it being. And I'm around it all the time. I'm around it constantly, you know, every, almost every day I'm around it. And, and it is just so complex. The rituals are, are, um, are so specific and there's little things. I mean, it's just, it's really beautiful. It's a beautiful religion for lack of a better term. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice. And, um, and, and I can't wait to learn more about it because <laughs> it's really awesome. Um, now let me go ahead and, uh, all right. Now I'm going to get into this next segment. Now, next segment, I get this question all the time. Why is my house haunted? Why is my work haunted? Yeah, I love that song too, by the way. <laughs> um, voodoo from Godsmack. Uh, somebody just put in chat. Yeah, I like that too. Um, why is the property haunted? Well, there's several different reasons on why a property can be haunted. And I've got a couple articles that I found that are really, really awesome, really great great educational um, articles and one is from the American Spectral Society and um, a, a lady that goes by the name of Rosemary Ellen Guiley um, wrote this big big article on different types of hauntings and she did a I mean she really went into some seriously awesome topics that if any of you are are um, are in even from the novice investigator to the enthusiast all the way to the seasoned investigator who's been doing it for 50 years this is a great article and, and I would recommend definitely reading it um now homes can be haunted for like many 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 reasons and the house doesn't have to be old to be haunted at all a brand spanking new house can actually be haunted um, no deaths are really needed to have a haunting either. Um, 
you know, no two situations are the same either when it comes to hauntings. Every every haunting is pretty much unique from the next. Um, now, these are the main things that probably are even more than, than this, but these are the nine main reasons for a haunting. Okay. Number one is going to be residues. Um, living people leave behind lots of energy. Uh, when they die, which, if it's strong enough, can coalesce into the imprints of images, sounds, uh, smells, um, movements, intense emotions generated by life events, like when they were living there, you know, like really great happiness, great sadness, uh, tragedy, and so on, creates energy. And it leaves in, you know, it can leave uh, an energy residue, which are can be experienced as uh, as ghosts, as uh, haunting phenomena, um, residual hauntings, which are not intelligent hauntings. Residual hauntings are like uh, you can be footsteps, uh, tapping, knocks, um, even apparitions, uh, distinct smells, uh, breezes. Uh, you can feel a cool breeze go by you, uh, temperature change, and, and pretty much so on. Residual hauntings can last for centuries. Um, but it, they do seem to fade a bit over time, um, which is why some really famous hauntings from centuries past uh, might not be experienced too much anymore these days. Um, a little bit I want to talk about that, about residual haunting, is um, residual is different than an intelligent haunting. A residual haunting is something that you can't communicate with. Um, a residual haunting it kind of goes along with the stone tape theory, which is that anything organic, uh, wood, um, like certain types of uh, stones like granite and crystals and certain types of limestone and things like that absorb that energy from, from the living. And the residual haunting, it might be um, if, you're, if you're in that place at just the right time and like say – the moon is in the perfect phase and the temperature is just right. The humidity is just right. You know, it's the perfect time of night and everything is just perfect. Then it, some of that energy can be released and replayed as one of those presentations that I, I mentioned a minute ago. It could be uh, footsteps or, um, you know, a cry or a knock on the wall or something like that. I mean, you have to think about it. As humans, what is the most common sounds that you hear every day as a human? Footsteps. I mean, hell, we all walk. So pretty much everywhere you go, you're hearing footsteps constantly, nonstop, every day. So it, it's not a far stretch to think that that would be one of the more common residual hauntings would be footsteps because that's something you hear from people. I mean – constantly. So you look at those things that are really common sounds that you hear all the time as a human, and you look at the residual hauntings that are even like some of the more popular ones, and a lot of times you'll find that some of the sounds and, and things you see and hear and smell and stuff like that are common for, uh, you know, for, for humans. So um, residuals, residues can cause and do cause hauntings. Um, number two, deaths. Deaths uh, houses can be haunted without having bad, uh, having had anyone die in the house. But death, especially like really fast and tragic deaths, can impart powerful residual energy. Um, accidents, crimes, uh, natural disasters, um, any like uh, chronic, painful, uh, long-lasting illnesses and stuff like that. All that can leave scars on the physical landscape. Um, so, you know, uh, deaths can and do cause hauntings. Um, number three would be earthbound souls. Some people don't make uh, an immediate transition into the afterlife when they die. Um, some, some souls, uh, spirits linger for a while in sort of a twilight between the worlds of the living and the dead, which I think is two different dimensions of space and time, personally. Um, but that's a whole nother discussion in itself. Um, earthbound conditions can happen in a sudden unexpected death, which the dead are temporarily either like lost or confused. They might not know they're dead. Um, that can absolutely cause a haunting and absolutely does. 
Um, number four would be burial sites, like cemeteries, um, especially when houses are built, like uh, when you got a house built on an old cemetery or something like that. Ooh, that's no, 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 no. Do not, <laughs> do not build a house on top of a cemetery. Or if you know of a house that's built on a cemetery, don't buy it. <laughs> not unless you want to live in a haunted house, which I don't know, some of y'all might like that. I would probably like that. <laughs> But I don't know. They would probably wouldn't be too happy spirits, though. Um, the basis for the burial site haunting seemed to be the long-held tradition that the dead do not like their resting places disturbed. I mean, I don't like I don't like being disturbed when I'm resting. I know y'all probably don't either. You know what happens when you get woken up from a you sleeping and you're sleeping so good, and then somebody comes and wakes you up real quick, and that you're like cranky and pissy. You're like get away from me. You woke me up, you know? So same thing with the, uh, with the burial site, you know, a, um, a grave, um, cemetery, you know, those kinds of hauntings are, they tend to be more active and you can have like poltergeist effects, uh, loud noises, unpleasant smells, um, shadow figures, and you can have the moving and the breaking of objects in the home when you build on top of a burial ground or burial site um, that could be you know any type of uh, burial ground <clears throat> then um, number five would be um, energized land sometimes the property itself the land itself holds an energy that enables or facilitate facilitates uh, excuse me haunting activities um, the presence of like an underground stream or a tunnel a cave um, old mines or certain minerals and metals like the stone tape theory suggests can act as batteries for spirit activity, um, keeping residues alive, basically. Um, earth energies can create interdimensional portals um, as well, which is what I think that, I think that the spirits live in a dimension that's, that we can't detect. It's there, but we can't see it or, or you know, hear it unless it crosses over into our three-dimensional space. Um, the earth is populated with a variety of beings who find certain places agreeable for transit or occupation. Um, for example, fairy lore is full of accounts of people who built on land owned by fairies who were not pleased and created in all manner of, of haunting phenomena. Um, there are many cases like that, you know, today. Um, and then number six on the list would be occult activity. This is a tricky one. Um, certain kinds of occult activities, such as spell casting, spirit conjuring, um, spirit communication, which is like I said last week, I do not recommend you investigate your home unless you want spirits to be there all the time. <laughs> and some of those spirits that come might not be good spirits. They might not be bad ones either, but they might not be good. Um, <clears throat> occult activity invites spirits to enter a place. Uh, sometimes those spirits will not leave, um, either because they were not sent away properly and the doorway between the worlds was not closed, or the summoners or whoever casted the spell lost control. Um, such spirits can linger in a place, bother old and new occupants, and might not ever go away. Residual activity can also create um, thought form residues that add to those hauntings as well. Now, the thing with occult activity, is it's thought that every home um, has like a natural barrier that prevents um, darker entities from just strolling in. And when people do occult magic, um, dark occult magic, because um, not all occult magic is dark, um, but a lot of dark occult magic, like say someone was a practitioner of, of a dark occult magic, and you were like renting a house to them and like let's say that you got in like a bad argument with them or something like that or let's say they didn't pay their rent and you said all right you have to leave and you evict them well upon evicting them they get mad at you and they cast a spell or they might leave something there that they casted a spell on that lifted that barrier so once that barrier is lifted you might have another family move into that house and then since the barrier is not there dark entities are just basically invited into the home and then that's when you get like crazy you know hauntings and and you know dark stuff happening and you know then you got to get help <laughs> with that so 
Um, another reason, okay, this is the, uh, let me see something. Yeah, I'm about to get on that in a minute, Andrew. Um, spirit attachments, and that's what I think I've got going on here. Spirit attachments number seven. Um, spirits can ride into a house or attach to an object, which I'm going to get on that in a bit too, um, such as a secondhand item. If the conditions are right, the spirits kind of anchor themselves in on the person or the object, and they'll start haunting the place. Um, I've got a haunted object. I forgot to tell you all that in the beginning. I've got I've got a haunted object, an artifact, um, that was sent to me by a really good friend that I'm going to open live on camera. I've been having it since Wednesday, and I've been wanting to open it <clears throat> so bad, but I wanted to wait and open it live on camera so that y'all can see me open it, and we can kind of, you know, check it out together for the first time. So I do have a brand new uh, artifact that I'll tell you about when we get to that. In fact, I'm going to do that after this right here, and we'll get into that in, in, in a bit. So, yeah, spirit attachments, yeah, absolutely. Items can absolutely hold spirit energy. And so can people, which I think is what happened to me. Now, number eight on the list is curses and psychic attacks can cause haunting. Sometimes a place can be affected by a powerful curse or a psychic attack launched by an individual. Curses and psychic attacks are usually aimed at individual people, um, very similar to occult magic um, that I talked about a minute ago. Those effects can spill into the environment affecting everyone on the property too so instead of uh it being a property um say that person were to cast that dark magic on you then that can affect everyone and everything around you as well so um dark things like that they the the effects from dark magic and and evil things like uh black occult magic or dark dark occult magics and dark spirits, dark entities, demonic entities, which all that's really rare. All this stuff is incredibly rare. Demonic entities and stuff like that are so rare, thankfully. Um, the, 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 you mean you hardly ever come in contact with anything like that. But if you were to come in contact with something dark like that or someone doing dark things like that, the effects can reach so far and so wide and creep into so many aspects of your life people around you's lives and it could be you know it could be a real problem so you know protect yourselves guys and and use good judgment um then number nine on the list and this is the end of the list here is uh possessions can cause hauntings individuals may become possessed by negative spirits or demonic spirits they don't have, now this is another thing too you don't have to be have a demon to be possessed by a spirit like not just demons can possess people people have been affected and possessed and influenced by just regular spirits as well it doesn't have to be a demonic spirit to to possess you or or affect you like that um inappropriate occult activity um additions um addictions rather um, and other factors can cause these things. The phenomena can spread out into the environment, creating unpleasant and even hazardous experiences for the person and everyone around them. So, you know, in, in closing, um, I don't recommend doing any occult magic unless you know what you're doing. Um, if you start casting spells and stuff like that and you don't know what you're doing, that can backfire on you bad. Trust me, I know this. <laughs> I'm not going to go into how I know this, but I know this. And um, if you know, in anything that you get into like that, the more research you do, the better. Um, there's no such thing as doing too much research. <laughs> you know, um, if you don't know, ask. And if you can't find anybody that knows, look into it yourself. Um, I would hate to see any of you guys get, you know, have something bad attached to you. <clears throat> so those things can all cause hauntings. And I'm going to put a link to those two articles. And if y'all want to read them after, um, just go down in the description and I'll put them down there. Y'all can click on them and check them out. All right. Now, next part. Now we get into some fun stuff.